Well, where are we today, Bill? Well, Rick, today we are in Rye, Rye, New Hampshire. Yeah. And this is the very, very first cemetery on record in New Hampshire. Yeah. This is Odeon Point, and behind us here is the very, very first recorded cemetery in the state. Have we been here before? We have. We were here when we probably one of the very first cemeteries that we actually wrote about when we started this journey. And uh, we were here and it was right after a storm and there was an enormous chestnut right. tree that had fallen down from about the other side of the wall there. And it was right up against the large stones that you can see at the end there, which are the, the Odeon family stones. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, I remember when we went in there, we couldn't even see really the Odeon no. family stones because they were covered by the tree. And we remarked a little bit that, you know, it was sort of too bad. But if you, you'll see in a moment that they have really done a nice it, job it, of cleaning this up. It is. It's, it's beautiful. It's yep. a beautiful face to visit. And which kind of brings up a good segue is because this is right hidden, right in, almost in plain sight. Everybody that lives in New Hampshire and in thousands, countless of visitors have come to the Odeon Point uh, uh, sea Museum, uh, the aquarium that's here, yep. and visited the park where the World War II fort, uh, the gun emplacements were. And it's very well known, but on the other side of the road, hidden from behind the little farmhouse that serves as the headquarters for the New Hampshire Park Departments, is this cemetery. And yep. very, very few people do know that it exists and that it is the oldest in the state. It's the truth. I, I, I mean, my wife and I and my family used to come down to Wallace Sands just around the corner. And for many years, we rented a place there. I never knew about this no, at that point. No, I never did until we started this and writing the book and read about it and was here. And of course, our hero, I think, Fritz Weatherby, kind of right in that same time frame, <laughs> did, did a cover. piece about it. So we're following in Fritz Weatherby's. And again, that, he's the, uh, our, our hero that works for uh, Channel 9 and is, appears on their Chronicle program every evening. Well, you wrote the article on this one. So uh, let's see, you know, what you discovered. All right. Well, first off, Fishermen were coming to the New World or New England as we know it today for a long time before anybody really started chronicling the fact that it, w it was here. And it, and that it goes to the, you know, to the fact that fishermen will never divulge where they fish. Good <laughs> fishermen will never tell you where the good places are. He'll send you somewhere else. And I suppose we're no different than that. But, and that's exactly what had happened. There was a uh, fishing uh, operation out on the Isle of Shoals here. And uh, Captain John Smith, the fa famous Captain John Smith, noted that in 1616. So there, it was well known mm -hmm. that this yeah. was a great fishing ground. And cod, of course, was the, the fish of choice. So uh, I, I have no idea, but this a fellow by the name of David Thompson have no idea if we're related, <laughs> uh, but uh, David, and he was a Scotsman. Well, came from and you have that heritage, <laughs> yeah. as do I. <laughs> he, uh, he got, he got a, a permit uh, or, uh, you know, uh, uh, from the uh, Council of New England to set up in 1623, to set up a fishing community here. And it would have been the first colony or the first town in New Hampshire had not David picked up and moved to Boston. And if anybody knows Boston Harbor, you will know that there is a Thompson Island in Boston Harbor. And that's where he set up his second fishing operation. Yeah. But he was here for a number of years. He built a stockade um, to defend the place from the natives. And the very first, the first individuals from that uh, small group that came here to fish are buried right here behind us. And, and you can tell that uh, they're, they're unmarked. They're simple, just stones marking the place where they were buried, and there's no inscriptions or anything on them. It is also said that there may have been, there may be a few Native Americans that are buried in here as well. And that uh, that's either a positive or a negative. It's unknown because it's very possible that the colony kept had some enslaved Native Americans here, in which case they were probably buried here when they, if they, when indeed they passed away. 
Um, but the fishing here must have been successful. Must have been astronomical. Because, and, and, and to go back to Captain John Smith yeah. and his writings, he talks about how marvelous it, the fishing was and, and what it was. And of course, it's no, no longer. Well, he that. also came here because Plymouth Plantation needed fish. Yes. Well, that's an interesting little story because the colonists from Plymouth came up here desperate and David Thompson took his own scallop, which is a ship, a little ship, a yeah. little boat, and he loaded it up with cod and took it down to the starving colony and may very well have saved them. Yeah, interesting. Uh, now, um, <clears throat> as time went on, well, like I said, uh, David moved on to Boston Boston and set up another operation there in Boston Harbor. Another family came along by the name of Odeon, and that's who gives Odeon Point its name today. And if I can find my in my little notes here, uh, Eben L. Odeon yep. started the his farm was here in 1660. And they are also buried here. And, and if you look to the, the rear of the cemetery, over to the over to the left here of, the, of our shot, that those large stones are of the Odeon family. So, and we all know a lot of people. If you're a New Hampshire resident, you know the terrible story of what happened to the Odeon family. They owned this, of course, from 1660 right up until World War II. Oh, yeah, can you imagine. So that's when the, the government, the federal government, took it over, and that's when the gun emplacements were put in place here, across the road here, and they were meant to defend the submarine base and the naval base in Portsmouth Harbor. After the war, <laughs> the land was given to the state of New Hampshire. <laughs> Not back to the Odeons. <laughs> and then not back to the Odeons. And when, when the Odeons cried foul and tried to get their land back, the state <laughs> brushed them aside and kept the property, and that's the way it is today. That's why it's a state park. Yeah. So, <laughs> so it's a, a, an interesting, very historical story of, of the, in the state's history, and kind of, uh, you know, a little notorious there towards the end and how the state ended up with the property. Although we can understand why they needed it, I guess. But, yeah. but in any case, maybe we should take a look at... Yes. Because last time we were here, as I mentioned, we couldn't see some of these graves. Right. So we're yeah. anxious today to see some of this that we haven't seen before. We've just set up and we haven't gone inside. By the way, you have to excuse us if I'm dancing a little bit. The mosquitoes here are yeah, we are getting eaten alive. <laughs> <laughs> now we're looking at a lot of those unmarked graves. Reminds me a little of some of the pauper cemeteries we've seen. But I think a lot of this is in those days was it it's basically you didn't have somebody unless you really were well to do that could come and do a stone for you. And we are right now we're looking at uh, the stones from the Odeon family. And as Rick just pointed out, that the ones that are right here kind of below the camera, they're unmarked and they're not unlike the stones that are, are undoubtedly from the first plantation. And the later ones here date, oh, 1865, you know, in that era. So they're much later, but the early, early stones are right here from the Odeon family. Um, the cemetery, by the way, is is owned or maintained by the American Society of Colonial Doms, and they a lot of monuments uh, in and around the Portsmouth area are maintained by that society, and and not a, a true national park or a state park. And you say contrary to what that idiot just said. Some of these are marked. <laughs> That was just recorded. Oh, okay. Then you can leave that in. <laughs> <laughs> now, these are probably some of the original graves, although we did notice over here right on the right, uh, it does say 1805 or 1804, 1805. So that obviously is a little bit later. Well, I have to say I'm impressed with how this has been cleaned up. Yes, they did a wonderful job. And uh, I would like to say that many, many families come 
to enjoy the Seaco Center here across the street and walk the trails here and, and enjoy the, the aquarium. And it's a great experience. But if you have the time, this is a great place to bring the family and, and think a little bit about the early, early history of, of New Hampshire. We would not be standing here today if David Thompson and his, his fishermen came from England to, to start that col colony, the colony of Panaway, and, uh, and got a footprint here, which was soon followed by Dover and Portsmouth, which are celebrating, or last year celebrated their 300th anniversary. Yeah. So it's a great place to take a little time and uh, get a little history of New Hampshire that's very much unknown, I think. Yep. Well, Odeon family, <laughs> original settlers, perhaps some natives. Sleep in peace. Rest in uh, peace. Rest in peace. We did find one thing, though. If you're over 65, oh, yes. you can park over at the uh, at the Odeon Point Center for yes, free. For free. <laughs> and given that we're quite a bit over 65. <laughs> That's a big deal for us. You know? <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry, but please all rest in peace.